We've all had a coach say this to us at one point in our careers, you have to have 10 toes towards the basket or you have to angle your feet slightly away from the basket. Today, I'm putting an end to this debate once and for all. So what is the best way to shoot? The answer is, it really depends on a lot of factors, but mostly, it just depends on your biomechanic predispositions. In this video, we're gonna look at just one of those predispositions and how it can greatly impact your shot. But before we can understand this, we have to establish two truths about shooting. The first one, we shoot asymmetrically. And this is by virtue of the fact that most of us shoot one-handed and we have a dominant hand. Secondly, therefore, our foot alignment must be different depending on where we are on the floor in regards to the basket. So if we're asymmetrical and we have a dominant hand and we're aiming at a stationary target, our alignment on the right wing will be different from our alignment on the left wing. That sounds complicated, but it's actually really simple. You have to align to the cylinder, not the perimeter. Now back to the original question. We've had a massive sample size of different shooters, and I expect most of my shooters to shoot close to 70% uncontested and 60% contested. If there's no biomechanic faults, this is very obtainable and should be very standard. So based on the fact that our shoulders and hips rotate slightly internally, I would say the majority of the time, you're gonna wanna shoot with your feet at 11 o'clock. So if 10 toes to the basket is 12 o'clock, we wanna just be slightly off of that. However, most of us have one dominant eye, just like we have one dominant hand. If you're opposite eye dominant, for example, you're lefty, but you're right eye dominant, things are a little bit different. We aim based on our vision, but we want to align ourselves based on our hips relative to the cylinder. And the reason being is so that our knees, hips, elbow, and wrist are all working together in sequence. So what tends to happen if you're opposite eye dominant and you shoot with 11 o'clock footwork, based on the truths listed earlier, you're gonna be off alignment and at some point during the shot, you're gonna have to rotate to get a true straight kinetic chain on the way up. These are just too many variables and you have conflicting points of alignment. So if you're opposite eye dominant, the best way to align is what Doc Shepler calls train tracks, 10 toes to the basket. This is gonna put you in a true straight alignment. The prime example of this is Lonzo Ball. He's opposite eye dominant and his shot mechanics were really messed up early on in his career. He didn't just shoot at 11 o'clock, his feet were at like 10 or nine o'clock. He was over rotated. And this is a common thing with opposite eye dominant players because they try to overcompensate to get that vision. But sometime around 2020 when he started shooting better, one thing you'll notice is they squared off his shot a little more. His feet were pointed more towards 12 o'clock and his shooting improved significantly. So how do you determine which is your dominant eye? All you have to do is shoot, film yourself ideally in slow motion, then look at the basket and watch to see if your head turns. If your head turns towards the right, your right eye dominant. If your head turns towards the left, your left eye dominant. If this alignment's in place and you don't have any faulty biomechanics, for example, a compressed rib cage, uneven hips, or just crazy muscle imbalances, you should plateau at about 70% uncontested shooting. And we take this to task. We pride ourselves on our shooting. We have three of our sections all-time scoring records. And it's important to note, we do have one of the most competitive sections, CCS. Archbishop Mitty's in there. The rest of the West Catholic schools are in there. Pinewood's in there. But three of these scoring records come directly from our gym, including most points scored in a game and most three-pointers made in a game. So we're not just blowing smoke. It also should be noted that a lot of us don't have a dominant eye. So when referring to adjusting our shot, we're talking about head turning eye dominance. But the majority of people, especially basketball players, definitely have some maladaptive patterns that they need to address. This is why understanding PRI and understanding biomechanics and understanding your tendencies are imperative to becoming an elite level shooter. It's also why the fact must be understood that there's no one cookie cutter way of how to align yourself when you're shooting. If you've practiced this and you still feel like you're shooting at a plateaued rate of under 70%, you have to work on being able to achieve a true neutral position. And if you wanna learn how to do that, click the link below and check out our program called the Phenom Builder. In the very first section, we establish how to achieve a true neutral position. We even have an assessment so you can see which areas you need to fix and ultimately progress into being an elite level mover, which is the most important thing for being a high level basketball player. As always, if you like the video, please subscribe and share, and we'll see you on the next one.